the chocolates. What the frick is that? We got the chocolates. Don't they do dad jokes? <laughs> we got the chocolates. Wait, there's a podcast? Yes. Really? <laughs> Yeah, it's welcome back to the We Got The Chocolates podcast. I'm Lee. I'm Skin. And I'm Gary. And that's Mikus over there. Hello. Mikus edits the pot. No, you don't. You film it, don't you? <laughs> and you're on it as Plays well. Plays bases. Builds, yeah. <laughs> Builds bases. He does some stuff, uh, but also obviously appears in front of camera as well. Lots of half jobs. Yeah. <laughs> David Britt that knows jack shit, he actually edits the podcast and responsible for putting it up on YouTube on time. Uh, and then Charlie is here who true. fact checks. <laughs> You're probably right by accident, but definitely stay for a laugh. A wig of the chocolates, that's a win. Yep, and I'm starting us off with a story, and I've just realised we could have chosen a different story as well because Mikus and I, our friendship's kind of struggling at the moment, but that's all right. Screw <laughs> you. Is that, is that still to do with that inside joke? No, no, no. This is about building bases. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> he only does half a job. Apparently, I told our Uber driver that on the way home. The other night. Hey, <laughs> and I said, Mikus sucks at editing. <laughs> okay, wait. For, for context, just if you're a first time listener, or probably at any time. You know, <laughs> it's also you, if you've ever joke. listened, you still wouldn't know this joke. Um, Mikus has this thing where like he'll edit videos, but he hates doing the job from start to finish. He just wants like the yeah, like, he wants the validation of us saying like, yeah, man, it's good to go. Yeah. So he'd never sort of like send it to us and go, oh, yeah, no, nah, this is ready. He always sends it to us and says, hey, boys, I've just built a really strong base for this yeah. video. If anyone right. wants to polish it off. If anyone wants to polish it so off, I've got a great base. It's cut down. But yeah, you guys just polish it. Um, that's the context. Yeah, and what a help it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, very helpful. <laughs> he also edits his own wedding videos. So I take it that eventually he does go from a take base to step. something else. Yeah. yeah, You'd think so. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> sorry to all those people who make us out of the wedding. Why is there a black screen there for 30 seconds? Oh, I thought you could just chuck something in there. <laughs> well, you got to polish off your own. It says another contract. <laughs> if you're going to get married, you need to at least edit your video as well. Oh, Wrong with you uh, people. But yeah, okay, so that happened. I told the Uber driver too much and now Mikus hates me. But earlier in the night, we oh, were- He's uh, got something to say. Well, okay. I was going to say, no, the way you said it as well, you said to the Uber driver, oh yeah, Mikus here is your CBO, which is our chief base operator. <laughs> And then he tried to explain that. That's actually good. Yeah, no, I like that. Great. Love it. And then he goes, oh, the reason he does that is because he actually sucks at editing. He just does the base. And I've just looked, and I was like, we were both pretty drunk. And I just looked at him. There was a genuine tear in my eye. And I was like, you're drunk. So you're telling the truth right now. And so Lee, I sent you three messages. I looked at them the next morning and I went, oh, that's so bad. So I've unsent them. Yeah, I was all read them. I know. It was all about that. And I was like, oh, it just sounds a bit lame. So I'll just unsend that. And then you asked what it was. And I was like, no, not important. Yeah, actually, I, didn't, I needed to push what harder. Happened? What were they? Must or dust? I'm sending a message. Nah, dust does. Yeah, yeah, I hate it I so hate much because I was like, what have I missed? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, now, it's a must. now you hate him, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I hate you all. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch's fiance, Eloise, is here listening today. And she hates I think we need And she hates us as well. <laughs> she hates everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got back to the house. It's like 1 a.m. And apparently, Scott, I don't remember this at all. And apparently, Skin and I are having a full d- DNM. <laughs> Outside the room, and Weez is just awake listening to the whole conversation. I'm trying to recover our friendship after I've just insulted him to this Uber driver. What is with you and insulting people when you're drunk? I don't know. I don't know. I need to stop drinking. (laughs) Or just stop insulting people. Yeah, yeah, stop yelling at people. Keep Uh, drinking, obviously. They're not mutually exclusive. You have to do one and the other. I've better social skills. It'd probably be fine. But (laughs) anyways, so because I haven't like woken Eloise up, stumbling into the house, had this massive deep and meaningful, and she's like run downstairs to try and film. Us, but uh, yeah, not ideal. <laughs> Anyways, I think we've probably run out of time for the actual story. Oh. So no, I think that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. Stay tuned for next week. <laughs> yes, stay, stay tuned for the rest of Migus and Skin's friendship. <laughs> <laughs> and how it progresses. Will or will they not be together next week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it started so well. Chief base officer has real oh, potential. CBA yeah. tattoo. Yeah. Nice. What are the odds? You don't have to get it. genuinely one and two. Yeah. Okay. See, that's the problem. Three, two, one. Two. one. Oh. No! <laughs> this what? is actually you guys aren't on the same way. <laughs> <laughs> this is why our friendship doesn't work. Uh, yeah. It's actually what always happens. Mikus right. always gives us one and two odds and he never loses. Mm. And then right. me and Skin have done one in fifteen, one in a hundred lost. <laughs> yeah, because you Makes obviously no just pick the obvious you pick the obvious number. Yeah, You're idiots. It is. Well, let's get on to joke of the week. So many jokes sent in for us on the chalk line, which we do love. We listen to them all uh, pretty much. 
yeah. until we found one we like and then we stop this. Thing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we found one that we like uh, and it's from Mike. Uh, and this is how it goes. Hi guys, Mike here. Whoa. I got into a hailstorm yesterday in Italy and now my car is al dente. <laughs> <laughs> I love what Cody's face in this because when, when he goes like that, he's actually happy. Yeah. That's, that's the equivalent of a standing ovation for yeah. Cody's yeah. joke of the yeah. week. That's good. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. Well done, Mike. That mm. is well done. I'm nervous about the written one. We've also had plenty of written ones sent in, so thank you very much for that. And I worked through all of them. This one comes from Jack. A little bit of context. Canadian joke here because we have a chain of grocery stores called Safeway. Yeah. Well, so does Victoria. Do they? Yeah. Woolies and Victoria Safeway. Okay. I don't know if it still is, but it used to be. 100%. percent pretty sure I went to Victoria recently and there was a Woolies, not a Safeway. Yeah, I think it changed back over, but 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Okay. Either way, they're wonderful yeah, people. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. You know where I feel really safe shopping? Okay. <laughs> Keep going. Right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woolworths? Yeah. Coles. <laughs> uh. Okay, the joke. Uh, how do you fit an elephant in a Safeway bag? Take the S out of safe and the F out of way. Take the S, S out of safe <laughs> and the what? And the yeah. F out of way. <laughs> I'm so oh, confused. Oh, mate. Come I need on. to write this Well, what's out. your immediate response to that? Take the F out of way. No. There the is. F out of way is, oh, there is no, no F in <laughs> way. There is no, no F in way. way. There is There's no, no F in way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nice, that is good. Right? That, that is, is great. Great. Maybe, yeah. maybe not for the podcast medium, but. Like. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. That is good. Yeah. Yeah. And as oh, we always like to say on this podcast, in fact, rule 14 in podcasting, yeah. make every joke take three and a half minutes yeah. to get. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is perfect. Uh, and that is brought to you by our friends at Better Beer, joke of the week, that is, and mm-hmm. probably went for slightly longer than usual That's this okay. time, but I'm fine with that. Well done. Keep mm-hmm. sending them in. That's at www.wegotthechocolates.com.au. You don't even have to type the www <laughs> if you don't want. It's up to you. Um, see how we're just getting more succinct at wrapping that up. But then you've it would more be so time much more it. succinct if you just stopped explaining that www thing. <laughs> you just make fucking everything take so long. <laughs> it's a really common theme in this episode yeah. coming up. What <laughs> 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 a Ford cell. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, now, Skin, yes. you, Mikas, and I went for dinner uh, last week. We invited Gody. He declined. Not on that, obviously. <laughs> okay. And, Another uh, friendship that's on the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. And uh, it's just, no, it's really funny. Like, these guys give me, like, I've got two kids and, like, a family and all that stuff. They give me, like, 45 minutes now. So, hey, do you want right. to come down to, like, Corumban for, like, dinner? <laughs> like, right, yeah. I not, felt, not really. <laughs> I felt really bad last Friday when we were like, hey, Gody, any interest in being in Melbourne next Sunday? <laughs> yeah, let me just no. check the kids are doing. Yeah. Uh, no, like, still it's, it's Father's Day and I'm, I'm coaching your cricket side. So, yeah, I'll see you guys there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, he didn't come. That's yeah. a summary. Um, <laughs> to dinner, that is. And uh, he... Uh, <laughs> All right. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> we, were, we were having a chat. Somehow we got onto first jobs uh, and like the fact that because we were eating curry uh, mm-hmm. for dinner, Skin, your first job was in a curry factory. Uh, and that, that would be an <laughs> like Indian restaurant. restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Yeah. You panicked, didn't you? I was thinking of ways to describe it. <laughs> It's an Indian restaurant yeah, in yeah. a kitchen. And right. a chef, They're but, genuinely yeah. synonyms. Okay. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was my first job. Um, and yeah, I guess the funny thing about my first job, which I often forget, I don't know I don't know how this happened, but for the first two months I was there, I just didn't get paid money. <laughs> <laughs> I got paid at the end of every shift while I was while I was trading. I got paid in curry. That's <laughs> unbelievable. That's really good. They gave me a free dinner on my way out. That's twenty five bucks. So the great news is actually Lethal and I um went in there oh, like yeah, one day funny. and like he's like, "Don't worry about this, boys. Just pop it on my bill." <laughs> So much better when you don't expect them to get. Yeah, no, I was not expecting it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because normally we just do it. <laughs> any segment about Indian food. We never do that sort of stuff. Yeah. So you just can't expect it. So, yep, exactly. Yeah. Me off but guard. yeah, seriously, yeah. that is weird. But yeah, it was very weird. <laughs> <laughs> not legal. Yeah, whole yeah, that's 100% not legal. Yeah, actually, yeah. Great we, people though. Oh, yeah. wait, we haven't named that place, have we? Probably no. shouldn't. Oh, don't. don't. Yeah. No. They actually were lovely people. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what I say about everyone that doesn't pay me. Yeah, that's what I don't get. It's like I went to school with the daughter and the parents were so okay, nice. Now you're too much detail. Okay, okay, right. They probably listen okay, to sorry. the podcast. Rewind, rewind. They were lovely people, but I just don't get how that flew under the radar. I would have thought like our mum would blow up. That's the club type of thing she would blow up about. And somehow it just went on for two months and everyone was like, this is normal. She, she was, was getting free curry. curry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> She's making money. She's happy as Larry. <laughs> that was your rent. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, my first was at Dollars and Cents, which was like a um, discount, like store. discount store. We did, that wasn't overly exciting. Uh, but the story that I remember from my first week of work is that I thought in the fridge um, was just like communal. And oh, I ate two times. No, <laughs> you did not. Yeah, yeah, a lie. Oh, you just, just like stealing people's lunch. No, why would you like stealing? Well, I kind of. I went through a phase of my life where that was a bit of an addiction, but um, not true. No, I genuinely thought it was communal food. That just like they were wonderful people and they were happy to like feed us snacks because we were working so hard out there. Mm-hmm. Um, turns out that I just ate like the old ladies' donuts. No. Oh, <laughs> you're the worst person I've ever met. <laughs> they had like a full staff meeting to go like, hey, guys, um, there's been some <laughs> people stealing other people's food. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Did you put your hand up? Nope. Like, no, I wouldn't have thought so. I only eat the food that's meant for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only eat the communal food. I, I just ate this up in the fridge. Uh, I, bet, I bet you do. Yeah, well, my first job uh, was at the news agents when I was 14. This is good. And um, it was my, I think it was my second shift. And uh, someone bought something and I've given them $50 change and, you know, all good. About half an hour later, the the manager of the boss calls me into the back room and she goes, hey, just letting you know, um, you gave someone the wrong change. And I was like, oh, I don't think that's true. She's like, well, it's on camera right here. Like it's an over, like a, a camera angle, like straight Drew down. The register. Yeah. I've given them $50. They did not get, they weren't meant to get any change. And she's like, yeah, probably just don't come back. And I was like, yeah, it's probably fair. <laughs> Really that How did you do that? I just don't get it. That'll be $20, thanks. Here's $20. Okay, and here's $50. 50. <laughs> <laughs> they paid with card. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I would probably still do the same mistake now. I was I was talking to Lloyd Pope yesterday as well, who plays cricket for South Australia, and I came up and played for Redlands in this KFC T20 Max League that we're playing in at the moment. And I said, like, Skin's got a funny story about his first job. What was your first job, Pope? He'd like thinking that it would open up a really cool conversation. And he was like, professional cricket. <laughs> <laughs> so not now. Got, got contracted uh, at 17. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, fair. Yeah, nice. uh, no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily we did get some good ones for the chalky, didn't we, Skin? Yep, exactly. We put it up on our Instagram story last night and, yeah, got a few belters sent in. I've broken them up into a few different sort of categories. So following on from me getting paid in curry for two months, I just wanted to ask which of these currencies would you prefer to be paid in? Oh, this is good. Did you say currencies? Currencies, mm. yeah. Mm. No. <laughs> Curry and twos. <laughs> Lobiak. I got paid in sausages by the hour. One hour equals two sausages. Eight hour shift, dinner and brekkie. Did he, where was he working? Bunnings? I don't know. <laughs> a, surely a butcher. A butcher? Maybe. Mickers? I don't know. <laughs> Mark. He's probably a butcher. Mark. Tiger champ. Collecting old clothes from people and was paid with 300 mil chocolate milk cartons for eight hours work. I thought you were going to say what's paid 300 yeah. mil. I would have <laughs> probably taken that, that one. <laughs> yeah. Pacey, I worked as an intern for a sports organisation and got paid in Costco pizza. Is Costco pizza, that's shit, isn't it? Is that like frozen pizza? Couldn't tell you. Great people though. <laughs> the pizza. It's probably yeah. very large. <laughs> what about the pizza? <laughs> <laughs> got him. Uh, so out of those three? No, no, one more. Oh, okay. uh, my name's Harry Fishmonger, paid in hot chips. I'm taking oh. hot chips. Yeah, I'm taking hot chips. Pizza. Yeah, I'm taking hot chips. Pizza. Actually, I'll take the meat. Okay. How have Costco you pizza? And chalky milk. Oh, no, uh, you're a nice coffee. coffee. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So you don't know me at all. Yeah, no, apologies. <laughs> this friendship. Another friendship on the rocks. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. just, just no, I think people in the back of the moment skin. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, there, was a, there was another sort of pretty dusty pay situation, which um, – that's yeah, probably why Godie's not in charge of our payroll over here, but Ambi74, I had to wait to be paid until my boss won some money on the horses. <laughs> <laughs> that is the dream. Oh, Responsibly, obviously. <laughs> the responsible group. Right. As a yeah. boss, imagine telling your employee yeah. that. How, I know. How do tell they know? Them that. Yeah. Yeah, it, depends. it depends if I get up at the race this weekend. We'll see. Yeah. Mm, what a no uh, this boss sounds like a great bloke. It might fit well at our podcast. Worked at a pizza store for a year. One weekend, the manager wanted to run a tuna pizza special. He thought he was a comedy genius because he called it 
two and a half men. <laughs> <laughs> that is a comedy yeah, genius. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, literally a genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very well done. Very good. Uh, and then quick little pre-plug for a, a segment coming up later. I think for the game we're going to play Fictionary. So does anyone know, before I read this one out, what is a blind mullet? It's in the Urban Dictionary. Blind mullet. Mm. Is it where your mullet's on the front so you can't see? <laughs> no, nah, it's a frullet. Oh, damn it. Nah. Is it a, a blind, blind fish? You would think. That's not. Uh, nope. No, what's a blind mallet? Apparently it's untreated fecal matter oh. floating in a river. Oh. Oh. Uh, well. So opinionated Craig says he was a plumber's assistant on a blocked sewer for an apartment block. Blind mullet everywhere. Oh, that's disappointing. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, well, luckily that's not the last one. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been tough to come back from. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, guys. Don't uh, you yeah. left us in deep shit. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> What do you got next in the pipeline, Skin? <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, just staying on that Make theme for a quick. moment. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah, I've obviously got one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've actually got one if I could just oh, read that. Yeah. The next Make one. Biggest sub-interrupting. Yeah. <laughs> BMX Blackford, worked, working for my parents' mobile toilet company. Literally the shittest job. Yeah, good. Yep. Yeah, I like that. Nice. That's good. Uh, Mickle Broden, sorted raisins on a conveyor belt. <laughs> oh, that, that sounds like a tough gig. That sounds, yeah, especially in this current climate. <laughs> So like what I used to say to um, <laughs> <laughs> you too. Um, you're so busy thinking of your own pun, you just ignore it. <laughs> I still didn't really you hear just what you said. Number three of podcasting, <laughs> laugh at every joke. <laughs> I too busy going with mine. Oh. It's probably the same joke. You know? <laughs> mine was going to be a pick up line. So what I used to say to girls like, yeah, do you like raisins? How about a date? Nice. No, okay. <laughs> Never worked. No, that's weird. <laughs> Wallace Cambino, my first job was at Savlaki Hut. I returned from holiday ready for my next shift, but the doors were closed and the lights were turned off. Turns out they went into liquidation while I was on holiday and no one told me. How long was his holiday? <laughs> I don't know. It's probably worth mentioning. Overnight. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy Partridge, first job, putting Is labels. She in a yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. I was going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> See, we do listen to nice. each other. Nice, yeah, well done, yeah. <laughs> Putting labels on vibrators and nasal inhalers. You really don't want to get them mixed up, she says. Oh. <laughs> yep. Some strange visual I just had. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. both. And it gets worse. Oh, good. Kyle's first job, bleaching buttholes for porn stars no. at 18. How, that can't possibly be a real first thing. job. <laughs> it can't know. be your first job. How do you though? walk into that with no experience? <laughs> <laughs> What the hell did he put on uh, his resume? Uh, <laughs> guys, guys, i got no P9 here. Um, nah, bugger uni off. <laughs> Can't possibly be true. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just reading them out. Okay, and there are two more to wrap us up. And I I mean, I'm not a business consultant, but I just don't understand these. Like something, something is strange is happening. Mr. Mortimer, my dad's first job was at a bakery. He used to kill wasps by clapping them in his hands. What, that was why, the job or yeah, that's just why, what he used to do? Why is that a position that the baker is hiring for? <laughs> no, I think he's I, just a baker and then he just threw in some extra oh info. Yeah, that's just for fear. He does that for bonuses. And has his dad heard of like a fly swatter? Why would you? Nah, oh, they're over would a wasp be there though? Mm. But I'm not clapping him in my hand. <laughs> yeah. You're not, no. no. Yeah, surely you're finding some other device. I'm just spraying a newspaper. More yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then, and then Sap Hamar says, worst job was screen printing T-shirts in a garage during the summer next to an oven. Why does a screen printing business need an oven going? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Food? They were cooking Costco Just, pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn the oven off, mate. <laughs> Mikas was there. Gosh, it's hot stand. in here. Anyone know why? <laughs> oh, shit, that yeah. oven again. It's like, like, like an oven in here. <laughs> Guys, remember that story of the three little pigs? Yeah, vaguely. Yeah, so there was that one that built his house out of wood, remember? And he was essentially the pig that dominated in that story. Mm, not really. Like there's one made out of straw and another one of sticks and bricks and other stuff. Yeah, I don't even know if they specified wood. No, but I think we all knew that it would have been structurally far more sound if they did have wood, right? Well, I guess probably, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, wood's pretty hard to find at the moment. And that's what you think. Why is that? Where would you get it? Excuse the pun. Just head to pilot.com.au. Yeah, easy. Yeah, man. Hard made easy. Excuse the pun. 
Now, if you've listened to the podcast for a long time, you would know, well, you would have heard from Kate McCarthy before, an AFLW player, or was definitely the last time we talked to her, which was probably quite some time ago now. She was certainly ripping it up in that competition. Uh, she joins us again on the line now. It's kind of the phone, kind of also like more upgraded than the phone. We can actually see her and hear her. I think, Kate, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, audio is working. <laughs> nice. Don't touch any buttons, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's been worst on ground thus far. So <laughs> to be honest, yeah. This is actually working far better than me. Remember that time we tried to get you on a Zoom call? Oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to download like new software on my computer or something. That is absolute debacle. Yeah. I feel like you Queenslanders aren't as good at Zoom as we are in Victoria. We had a whole two years of it. So yeah, That's right. a very good point. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. you're quite right. Now, Kate, can you just start by updating our obviously new listeners probably we haven't heard from you before. Uh, old listeners, they would have heard from you quite a long time ago. Uh, since your sort of playing days, what have you now got yourself into down there in Victoria? Well, Melbourne, the heart, the heart of Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> was playing um, AFLW, played from the first season all the way through to season seven. Um, was playing at Hawthorne last season um, and was sort of keen to go around again and then um, – sort of the writing was on the wall. I was probably going to get delisted, let's be honest. Um, so I quit before I got fired um, and retired. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, and, yeah, sort of as soon as I finished that, I've done a lot of commentary. So I commentate for Triple M in the men's season and then um, do a bit for Channel 7 in the women's season and then also sort of thought that that flowed really nicely into coaching. So I guess commentary, you analyse the game, talk about what one team's doing well, why they're doing uh, – which is why they're winning. Um, look at another team, how they can sort of, I guess, change up what they're doing and hopefully get back in the game. Um, so I thought that's that's pretty similar to coaching and – I really enjoyed sort of the, the last two clubs that I was at really helping some of the younger girls. So I thought, why not have a go at coaching? And it's also a really nice way to sort of stay around the game as well. Um, so I'm coaching now. I'm doing the forward line uh, assistant coaching at the Western Bulldogs. So with Nathan Burke and a few others. Um, and I'm really loving that. And it's also a nice way to sort of stay relevant, I suppose. Um, keep my head in the game and stay around. I like that. There's a little bit more pressure though, isn't there, coaching as opposed to uh, commentating, Kate? Like when you're commentating, you can just say, Oh, well, this is what that team's doing. And then when you're coaching, you seem to get sort of blamed for everything. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. That's why I probably won't be ever a senior coach because they take all the blame. Um, whereas I'm just suggesting things and if they work, they work. If they don't, it's probably Berkey's fault anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. so I told that's you that was would. a bad idea, yeah. honestly. Yeah. <laughs> you guys need to listen to me, Mills. Seriously, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, Kate, we, we were interested to get your thoughts on the, on the sort of coaching side of things because we discussed last week, uh, Skin and I have been playing for the – I'm sure you've probably heard about performances and stuff. It's been in the papers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you sent me the tapes to have yeah. a look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really wish if we had highlights, I would spend so much time cutting them up and sending them to skin as well. <laughs> it we makes later for our real jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we've been playing for Alex Hills and skin managed to win. We're not really sure. Actually, something we wanted to clarify with you at like a higher level, how is the voting for best on ground done? Because we're sort of for like the best players for your team because we're now convinced that it's a genuine lottery. And the reason we think that is because <laughs> skin got, what was it? What was, I don't want to exaggerate. I want people to actually know the truth. There was five goals before half time. Yep. Kicked on you. Yep. And then he went on. I got I got taken off of him. <laughs> Understandably, he went on to kick seven, and I got named best on ground. <laughs> Not even in the best on ground. The best on number ground. one. <laughs> was it for the other team? Or? <laughs> I guess. Well, that's what we want to ask. Is it like that? The Kedron coach maybe voted, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was taking care of the votes. So is this like coaches' votes or your team? Well, we don't know. We think it's coaches' votes, but we're not sure. Like if our coach was maybe not there. <laughs> For the first half, <laughs> like we don't know who usually does it. Do you? Are you involved in like voting for those player awards? So at VFL level, um, we basically name a best, which is like your five top players um, in no real particular order. You have to submit them. So I presume that's kind of what happens. Your name has been thrown up in the best um, mm. and someone just probably did the order wrong um, and you <laughs> got the, the top votes. Um, it's concerning. <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, I'm, I'm really not sure how you get five kicked on you, then get moved off the player mm -hmm. and then get best on. Yeah. I've Impact, got, obviously. Yeah. I've got two theories. Firstly, <laughs> firstly, we've got a player coach and I handballed it to him a few times throughout the second half. So maybe he was really pleased with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, my second theory was obviously after I got moved off of Old Mate, I just had a much easier job and, and got a few more touches in the second half. So maybe whoever does do the votes just got there at halftime. What a wonderful yeah, piece of coaching. Is, this though. guy is impactful. <laughs> <laughs> From a coaching perspective, that is a genius move. This yeah. boat's getting towed up at halftime. Take him off. Oh, he's actually pretty good. I yeah. mean, we still lost by eight goals. Yeah. So. <laughs> But also the um, giving the the handball to the player coach that's fantastic. That's, that's like um, absolutely. You always make sure you give the ball back to the umpire. Be very polite to them. Wear bright boots so they know who you are for mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. any sort of end of year voting. So that's that's well played by you. That's that's very clever. That's Thank actually you. genius from a cricket perspective. When I used to when you didn't have to wear a helmet to wicket keep, mm-hmm. I always wore a mouth guard. Mm-hmm. The only reason I wore a mouth guard is so that I would go to the umpire like every over and say, can you please hold this man? And we'd get a chance to talk about our days and how many kids he has and stuff. And But hold on, why are you giving the umpire the mouth guard? That's big. No, I put yeah. it in a case and said, can you hold this? And then when a spinner came on, I'd go, I need that. So yeah. we just got to interact the whole time. And then I always won the wicket keeping award. Yeah, but <laughs> also you just do whatever you can in your life to make everyone else late, don't you? And slow. <laughs> That's just what you do. <laughs> how have you drawn that no, conclusion? Yeah. <laughs> because how slow story. is that? Like cricket's meant to be like free flowing, right? And you're like talking to the umpire and like handing him like a mouth guard and stuff like so just fucking run to the other end. It wasn't even relevant. You've just jimmied that into conversation <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. somehow. Everyone's in place, <laughs> ready to bowl, and he's still having a chat to the umpire. Yeah, the so hurry up, <laughs> mate, for God's <laughs> sake. Okay, then we were hoping to use your AFL expertise, uh, given the fact that you're actually watching these games as we know, commentating on them. Something happened last week that we sort of found quite humorous, but like probably should, it was quite sad for one particular club, but we were kind of looking at it like, how has this happened? Like this is a proper debacle. Uh, and the the thing I'm referencing is the AFL uh, when the, it was Adelaide Crows, Ben Keys has a kick, I think, to put them in front, like genuinely would have put them in mm-hmm. front yep. against yep. Sydney. Uh, kicked a snap from the pocket, started celebrating. Uh, he was at the crowd, like giving them the fist bumps and stuff. It was yep. to get him into finals. Yeah, to yeah. get him into well, – that. yeah, as it turned out, it would have genuinely locked him in the eight. Um, and he has started celebrating and in the meantime, the Sydney fullback has just taken a kick out and <laughs> started playing on because little yeah, unbeknown to him, he has signaled that it hit the post and is behind. And we were just like – in this day and age of technology, the fact that we have the ARC system and goal reviews and stuff, how would you possibly not just go, actually, you know what, we might check it? Yeah, well, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, geez, he must be sure. He must have seen it. It's absolutely mm. smashed into the woodwork. It's mm. absolutely no doubt about it. And then I saw a different angle and I was like, that has absolutely not touched the post. <laughs> um, and by the time that um, they actually got the ball back in, or actually by the time Ben Keyes had finished celebrating, Sydney actually had the ball halfway down the other mm. end of the field. Um, so I think the thing that would probably make it more frustrating for Adelaide is, first of all, Sydney have snuck into the eight. They're the eighth team. So That's they right. would have definitely been eighth with that win, Adelaide Crows. Yep. The other thing is um, coming up to finals, they said, okay, like – any decision that you are unsure about, you will review now. And over the weekend, there was about, I reckon, 30 score reviews for things that were just complete, like yes. absolute <laughs> certainties. And Adelaide are probably sitting at home going, oh, okay, so now we're going to review everything, but we didn't <laughs> review the one decision that cost us our season. Thanks so much, yeah. guys. Yeah, exactly right. There were literally like reviews last week where the guys like clearly kicked it. The nearest player to him was 19 metres away. Yeah. I just want to check this wasn't touched off yeah. the boot. Yeah. Oh, I actually hit that bloke in the crowd. <laughs> oh, yeah, play on. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the other thing that adds um, insult to injury is the Geelong Cats are on their Mad Monday at the moment. Um, they I always do Mad Monday very well, probably um, one of the best teams that do it. And I just had a look and they've actually dressed up as that scenario for Mad Monday. So <laughs> you got Tom Hawkins is one goalpost. Um, another player is the other goalpost. Isaac Smith has gone as Ben Keys. He's got tape on the back of his jersey because he's obviously got a number 12 Crows jersey. Um, <laughs> put tape over the one so he's Ben Keys number two. Um, and they've got Billy Brownless in to stand as the goal umpire. And they've actually reenacted the entire scene. Uh, that's their Mad Monday outfit. Oh, that so, hurts. So <laughs> what? It's a pretty easy job to. Hey mate, can you just play the role of go goalpost? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him in about four hours sitting there as a goalpost when he's not too well. <laughs> Bit of a wobbly goalpost, yeah. I reckon. If someone buy me a drink. I'm not allowed to move. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and- um, the other thing, though, like I have a theory though with the Adelaide Crows. So, like. Let's be honest, they're not that angry, are they? Like I was expecting them to be a lot more irate, um, handle it a lot better than they – well, they handled it very well, was expecting them to be a lot more angry than they were. Um, But I think they've probably just 
got a cheap flight. They've they've booked in mm. early for Mad Monday or um, for their footy trip, and those flights were on sale that weekend. And yeah. it's all worked out for them, and they've been able to go on footy trip a week earlier and save themselves a fair bit of cash. They're at Mikus's favourite place, gracious. Bali. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's it's all a, part of the plan. That is actually a great theory because we we did have that discussion too, and I think like when we're playing, I mean. Mitch, my skin is very calm, whereas I'm typically more irate. But, like, if an AFL, <laughs> the, the AFL comes out and apologizes to your club and says, oh, sorry, it would have acted, if they reviewed it, it would have been a goal, I would just be like, fuming like proper oh, yeah. burn the organization down <laughs> top of immediate reaction and they were just like nah yeah sorry everyone makes mistakes <laughs> that's just our season that's yeah. an entire season 24 rounds that are just for nothing now but mm-hmm. that's all good guys oh, uh we'll God. move on oh my gosh it's so strange isn't it because we i mean we had blow-ups like i mean and this is at our level of footy which i must stress is not good <laughs> I feel like that means a bigger blow up though. Yeah, like, you're right. The lower the it division, means, the it more means into more. It people are. Absolutely. Mm, yeah. People do love it. Yes, okay. In the meantime, while I'm like picking, I wouldn't say fights, but certainly battles with umpires, we're rarely just on the same page, I feel, myself and the umpires. Like we, we just see things differently. It's sort of like writing in English, it's sort of up to interpretation. You've got a lot of creativity. Um, <laughs> so you get along a lot better with the cricket umpires than you do the AFL. No, that's false as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's an absolute pest to them as well. <laughs> anyway, so I'm sort of like trying to me, I spend most of my time trying to tell them, like just help them through their umpiring and stuff. I'm uh, sure they love it. Yeah. <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, Skid has got an umpire last week come up to him and say, well, you should probably retell this story, but he came up to me and said, why is your brother not wearing number 27? Yeah, well, that was pretty much what he said to me as well. I was like walking into the into the dressing room and it was the first week of finals, so we haven't had this umpire all year. I don't think I've ever seen him before and I'm just strolling into the change room and he's like, are you playing in number 27? And I was like, it took me, because I'm obviously slow, <laughs> it took me like 30 seconds to work out what was going on and I was like, oh, no, 62. <laughs> Ever the conversationalist, aren't you? So so good in social settings. (laughs) Skid's trying to build rapport with the umpire through our podcast. He was just like a massive. He's a massive. That's why I think that's why I was so annoyed because he. Loved the podcast and then would not give me a free kick ever. Yeah, that's right. And was he's it, obviously what, got his favourites. He's yeah. who he likes the most on the podcast. Yeah, that, unfortunately, his favourite was too busy getting towed up in the forward line. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and what, was it him that because you at the end of that game you were absolutely fuming over a free kick against you? Was it was that him that blew it? Yeah, uh, him. Yeah, yeah. So Lee's tackled this bloke and. He's dropped the ball cold and then Lee's been penalised for holding the man without the ball, which he was because he dropped the ball cold. <laughs> but, yeah, so Lee was fuming about that and then and then the photographer at our game got this photo of the two of us that just made Lee look even more guilty the next day. There's like, he, old man's dropped the ball cold, I've immediately picked it up and I'm running off and Lee's meanwhile on the ground like bear hugging this bloke. Still so everyone's just commenting, I, I think he might have gotten this one right. <laughs> <laughs> So I should not say we have a photographer at the game. That makes it sound a lot like we're playing better oh, than what sure. we are. Yeah. It's someone's mum that yeah. likes taking that's photos. Like, like, enjoys taking photos. Yeah. She's good don't worry, that happens today for W Level 2. Yeah. Just a few people's mums there taking photos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Yeah, but Kate, what about you as a, as a coach? Any blow-ups for you, do you reckon? How would you have taken that? Just put yourself in the in the position. <laughs> yeah, look, I don't know how I would have handled that. That's... um. I mean, a game like AFL, you'd probably expect them to get that right. Um, it was, yeah, a huge, I don't know, like they train pretty much the whole year round. They have six weeks off and, and that's their entire livelihood. Um, and to have a decision cost you the entire season, I would have been a lot more disappointed in that than than they were. I don't know, maybe in-house they, they let it all out and yeah. – had a good chat and chewed the fat, but I would have been irate. I would have been so angry um, and just, yeah, not handled as well as they did. But to their credit, they did a, they did a great job. They were very professional um, and acted in a way that I absolutely wouldn't have. Do you think there would be – have you got the potential – would there be a McCarthy-like blow-up? In, 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 I know as a forward-line coach, it's not really probably necessary, is it? But – if you were a head coach, do you reckon you'd have the capacity to get out at three quarter time and do one of those classic <laughs> Kevin Kevin Sheedy sort <laughs> Kevin of, yeah. Sheedy type and just spray yeah. everyone? Oh, absolutely. And I wouldn't save that for the dressing shed either. Like some coaches are nice and composed and then in the dressing room they sort of let loose. But I'd make sure everyone saw it because if that if that turned around some form, then it's all over. Like that's a great spray. Yes. Um, but 
I think the sprays, they're few and far between now in AFL football. Yeah. Um, we <laughs> saw one a couple of weeks ago, Sam Mitchell, oh, like yeah, almost charged time. into some of his players, um, really puffed out the chest and like had a real go at them. Um, and they were able to turn the form around. But yeah, there's not many sprays that happen in AFL football anymore. And I think, I think they need to come back. I think they're great. They're a great visual. Um, we get to really see that it's under the skin of the coaches, but um, yeah, there's not many that float around anymore. Maybe we'll see a few through the finals campaign now that it's, you yeah, know, all on the line, line sudden death. Um, Sheep stations. Mm. Yeah, let's hope. Or you can come and watch our footy. We get sprayed oh, yeah. every quarter. <laughs> I'll come and just give you guys a spray. <laughs> That's fair I'm not too, coaching. I'll just come down and yeah. listen to the huddle and then just spray all of you. Yeah. It's, well, if it means I don't get seven goals kicked on me the next week, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you'd actually probably like, you'd struggle to get your full spray in in the time allotted to like half time because we'd do that much wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you meant because you couldn't quite make it to the huddle. You'd be talking to other people making everyone late again. So. <laughs> too busy giving my mouth guard to the umpire. <laughs> Can you just hold this, sir? <laughs> Oh, well, Kate, you've been fantastic to catch up with and we'll certainly be doing it a lot more frequently now. I mean, look at that setup. We've actually had your video going for the YouTube video here. If, uh, for anyone that's watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see Kate. She looks, you can tell that she's done commentary. That mm-hmm. is professional. That's a proper mic setup, that, isn't it? Yeah. It's actually the first thing that you said was, we should get one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I've said that for the last like two and a half years. <laughs> well, Hopefully one day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll save up. Save it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Kate. No worries, guys. Thanks for having me. We've got a name, Storm. And you're standing there without a name. So we'll give you one you can acclaim. Clap at the start of that. <laughs> testing the acoustics. <laughs> but it was like, I thought he was going to try and like, you know when people used to start clapping along to songs? It was like, Migas was going to do that, but it was so out of time. <laughs> I don't know why it did that. Whatsoever. Anyway, we got a specific request that we need to act on straight away. It's time sensitive. Tennessee Zoo. I was speaking of pick up lambs, actually. Pick up lion skin. Mm. Mm. <laughs> All right. Do you remember that one? Are you from Tennessee? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's- <laughs> Go to finish it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. So uh, Tennessee Zoo has a spotless giraffe, and they are holding a name contest. Problem is, the name suggestions are very dot 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 ellipsis. Okay, and they actually suck. I uh, think it's a real missed opportunity. I don't know. They're con- they, they do suck. They don't mean they? they mean things. Like yeah, I think, but that's not funny. Kapeki means unique or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. Oh. oh, that's also what happens when a magpie goes over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. my chickens used to do that to me all the time. <laughs> Give me a Capecchi. <laughs> oh, crikey. Actually, the first time I ever kissed Kathleen, I actually gave her a little Capecchi. <laughs> and segment's done. No, no need to do this anymore. Maybe we should, should there any others? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. What are the other names? <laughs> Jamela. Jamela. Shakiri. Shakiri. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I think it's a real missed opportunity for a name storm. By the way, I don't work there, not even in the same continent, but maybe you could come up with a name so good they might go for it. Obviously, we can. Not sure I doubt that. that in. Um, I'm not that confident this nah, time. No, nah, this yeah. is a tough this one. This is a tough, tough gig, the old giraffe. But. Giraffe is really hard, obviously, unless you wanted to start with a famous TV show from Australia, para- <laughs> Pack to the Giraffes. That's very good. <laughs> good. Yeah. I went along the same theme and went uh, Patrick Giraffe. Oh, I had that too. <laughs> I had two and that was one of them. Oh, no. That hurts. <laughs> do you want to do your other one? Yeah, probably you, do you, probably you go now. Yeah. Oh, still- <laughs> Does it suck? Oh, yeah. No, no uh, clear a cell. No spots. Spot free. Nice. Uh, okay, I see what you've nice. done there. Yeah, I went actually Kleenex as well. Okay. Because yeah. he leaves to play spotless. Is it Kleenex think- tissues? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's got clean in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. On, on that theme, I had plain in the neck. That's oh, good. good. <laughs> well, what'd you have? Plane in, in the neck. Because it's got no spots. Plane in the neck. And it's giraffe's got a long neck. Oh, they that's do have a long, long neck. neck. That that that's one thing I can't yeah. argue with. <laughs> that is a long neck. <laughs> uh, draft punk. No, nice. I had that. Lovely. Good. Draft uh, beer. Oh, I had that too. And I had daddy long neck. I said daddy long legs. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that sort of works. Uh, draft and the furious. <laughs> <laughs> It's a long stretch, a like long it's next. Stretch. I just, had, I just had a simple like life draft. Nice. They carry them on boats and stuff. The Titanic needed more. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Uh, if he goes out on the road, he might cause a traffic jam. <laughs> <laughs> Are we, are we forgetting that it was meant to have something to do with spots? Doesn't no, 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 oh, okay. no, 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 no. Yeah, the, only one we, the only one we could think of for that was like spotless stadium. Yeah, yeah. Spotless is yeah. more. I've got a couple of tennis players to finish. I've got Steffi Giraffe. <laughs> nice. And uh, Giraffe El Nadal. That's really good. <laughs> That's I'm really very good. very happy wow. with that. Yeah. That's yeah. not. Because I always went more down the uh, maths route. No, no, like X and uh, Y draft. Oh, I was going to say I had a horizontal, vertical and pie draft. It's not a pie chart. Yeah, but I just had to find a way to get to giraffe. It's such just, like just it's a pie different graph. <laughs> uh, uh, if he escapes from the zoo, Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. This is about the best. I quite like it. Yeah. yeah. And if he does seventy-five hard with Mickers <laughs> before and after photos. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we want to stay up to date with the lingo of modern day society, and that is why we play a game called Fictionary. So one, two, three, it's the Urban Dictionary. I got some slang in mind that I really want you to define. Clap along, because you know the rhythm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, Fictionary. Basically, I'll give you a word and put it in an example sentence, and the person that's closest to the mark uh, in terms of the exact definition from Urban Dictionary, they are awarded with the points. How do we normally decide? It's not a buzz in usually this one. It's more just like a, everyone gets a turn at going first, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. All right. Let me start you with an easy one. Balked. I can't come over at the moment. My car is balked. I'm going to say it's fucked. Well done. Nice case. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad we all got a turn. At yeah. least. <laughs> <laughs> Great game. Okay, really good. Nah, that's good. Uh, to have totally fucked something up, usually by doing something stupid, specifically used to describe technology that is broken. Mm. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that makes sense that Goaty would use that all the time then. Mm-hmm. So. This thing's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> or balked. Or balked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right, next one. Shexting. <laughs> Robert was forced to use the shexting method. It's your turn. I know. <laughs> Do you want some crickets? Well, assuming that you got the most obvious thing ever, <laughs> I've got shexting. Oh. I think I can. Oh, we'll go, Mikas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah take um, it away. I reckon texting while taking a dump. Anyone else want to guess? Wow. Oh. That's, yeah. Okay. I'll have my guess, but that's better. Uh, I was going to say sexting while in the shower. So, oh, nice. sexting well in the shower. Yeah. No, I reckon Mikas is bang on. I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. It is texting your friends, loved ones, or even your annoying co workers whilst taking a dump on the porcelain throne. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shitting plus texting equals shexting. I like that. Okay. That's good. You can leave that in. That's nice. All right. Here's one you should get, Mikas. Okay. Clutch oven. Mike was, t- Mike was taking us to Jake's party and he farted, giving us a clutch oven. Nice. Good. Yeah. Oh, I'm going oh, to well, no, yeah. say it's a fart in a car and you lock the windows so they can't put the windows down. Yeah, pretty hard. It's like a dutchy. With. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was familiar with the old Dutch oven. Yeah. But, yeah. To fart in a car full of people, crank the heat for maximum oh, effectiveness. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't mind that too, to be honest. That's good. <laughs> Why did you have to add that detail? <laughs> I'm just reading what it says on Urban Dictionary. Chipmunking. I'm chipmunking all the lectures tonight is the example. Oh, sentence. watching them on like double speed. Wow, well done. Wow. You, know my, you know my dad, Steve Goaty, <laughs> side note, he listens to every podcast on either 1.25 or 1.5 speed. Yeah, every podcast. Our sister Brian does impressive. that too. Yeah, that is that's cool. But like, so when you hop in the car, with him, like, like, we like go to the dump or something like that. So what's happening? What are you listening yeah. to? Yeah. yeah. I do it with some podcasts where they're like informational and sort of get through stuff slowly, but I've tried to do it with ours and it's – yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. I actually do we just keep talking over zero point seven five. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the art of watching numerous recorded university lectures at two times speed in a futile attempt to cover an entire semester's material the day before the final exam. Yeah, nice. That was nice. a long sentence. Mm-hmm. That's chip monkeying. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last one, mm-hmm. it's not great, but uh, score check. Mikus is on two. Goaty one. Skin one. Okay. So this round could lock it all up with zero tiebreaker again, as per usual. That is, <laughs> that is the dream. That's <laughs> what we're after. We want. Yeah. Here we go. It's a clam jam. Mm. Mm. <laughs> thought you can get in early if you like. Otherwise, uh, Tina thought she had this guy at a party. <laughs> That's all I'm going to give you. Because I feel like That's enough. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, <Go, Cody. laughs> Uh, you should okay. actually get it. Okay, so he's pulled another bird, essentially. Like, right. as in, like, he's got a couple on the go. I'm gonna, okay. Yeah. 
I feel like it's like cock blocking, but fair. Come on. <laughs> Do you study Urban Dictionary? <laughs> that is wow. freakish. He does that in between like Tina thought she had this guy at a party, but her friend completely clam jammed her by oh. mentioning oh. <laughs> what about this? By mentioning she was pregnant in front of him. <laughs> What a bitch, Tina. <laughs> what a terrible thing to do. What a terrible phrase. <laughs> the female equivalent to the cock block. <laughs> I can't imagine I'm going to use that very much. No, no, no. No. Um, glad I mean, I've never say never. Disposal. But- yeah. <laughs> um, score check. Mikas, you've dominated there. That's oh. three. Three to you. One to skin. One to Gody. That could genuinely be the first no, game I've ever won. That. Is that yeah. your first win? No, we win taboo most of the time. Yeah, but like- That's a team game, I guess. Usually yeah. you win and yeah. I'm just Laughing. holding on. <laughs> and obviously we're not allowed to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. No, you're good. Excellent. No. No. Very good. Mm. You're in for an X. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't know How's our renaming out? We don't know what we're going to call it's it. Anyway. not made any progress. Yeah, anyway. Uh, okay. This got sent to me. Am I going no sound effect or a sound effect? Just, just sound the whistle it. thing. That'll do. That's a bird, I think. Yeah. No, this one got sent to me yeah, what's by. What's the sound effect going to be? I don't know. This was got oh, sent to me by a full jingle. That's right. Sorry, the full jingle is going to be. <laughs> just, <laughs> mate, hold what you're doing. Yeah. For a second. Uh, we're just, yeah, the yeah. full jingle is going to be. This is a shout out to my ex, but we'll reword it. Oh, okay. yeah, we will. Yeah. It needs layering. Obviously, layering. Migus will be in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Crikey. Good. Um, this was sent to me by a person at the table. I'm not going to name who. Uh, a tweet by Peter, as in the uh, animal. Yeah, uh, your PET. Yeah. Uh, next time you're thinking of eating chicken, remember that they had a family just like you. And then someone, he's nameless. This is why I order a family bucket at KFC. Oh. No one is left behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, that's good of you to send that through, Skin. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Radio. <laughs> That's another episode of the We Got the Chocolates <laughs> podcast complete. We welcome you to be a part of the Chockies crew. Get in touch with us. Uh, first, you can do that via our socials. That's at We Got the Chocolates anywhere that you find social media channels. If you find no one that we're not on, let us know. We'll, we'll make it happen. What are you doing? Do? Uh, just giggling. Just giggling. Right. Okay. Uh, make us tell a joke. Uh, yeah. In our social, but what quietly? <laughs> <laughs> he pointed to his leg. <laughs> No. Oh, tattooed. Don't yeah, worry. Tattooed. He's going to get that tattooed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, in our social bios as well, you will find discount codes for LSKD and Better Beer merch at the moment, 15% off for all Chalky listeners. So help us help you by visiting those. Yep. And also help us by visiting the website and contributing to the show either down the chalk line if you'd like to hear yourself on a future app or you can just write in below if that's your preference. And while you're on the website, you can also get a discount to the little bit of merch that we've got left. More you, coming, obviously. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, plenty more on the way. Uh, but yeah, if you find those little five little chatter teeth logos around the website, you'll, you'll get a How many of them? How many of them now? Really? At least... 10 or 15. Yep. Really? Mm. Yeah. It's exciting. Very good. Keep, <laughs> keep the ratings and reviews coming. YouTube comments. YouTube's going good. We're in the top 50 podcasts on Spotify last week. Yeah, that is great Whoa. news. And we got our 10K downloads as well. So we did. On day 10. one. 10.2, in fact. It was that amazing. was mean. 10.5 well this week, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge yourselves, everybody. <laughs> Lift. Remember, moving goal pass, just, really. just remember, it's got nothing to do with us. It's all to do with you, blokes <laughs> and girls. And girls, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone. Anyone. Yeah, nice. Uh, remember that if you're out there having a laugh uh, with your mates this week, then you're absolutely getting the chocolates. We love having you here. We'll speak to you again this time next week. And as always, good luck in the future. And that's stumps. Love you. Love you. Love you. Lay base.